The next topic is using accounts payable. Accounts payable transactions can be entered in a number of different ways. We'll discuss purchase orders, the purchases receive inventory window, and how to enter various forms of payments. Each transaction updates their respective journal, which in turn updates the general ledger. However, do note that the purchase order journal does not update the general ledger. To enter a purchase order, click the Purchase Orders button from the Vendors and Purchases Navigation Center. You can also select Purchase Orders from the Task menu on the menu bar. The Purchase Orders window is used to enter and print purchase orders for inventory and supplies ordered from vendors. Some important fields on this window include the good through date, which defaults to one month past the purchase order date. If necessary, you can change this date. If you plan to print the purchase order, leave the PO number field blank. You'll then enter it during the print routine. If this purchase order was manually written, enter the purchase order number here. Click the Close Purchase Order checkbox to close a purchase order. A purchase order is automatically closed after all items are received. Select the Drop Ship checkbox to specify a drop shipment from a vendor directly to one of your customers. By default, the unit price is the last purchase cost for the item. New items that have not been ordered and do not have beginning balances use the cost associated with them in the last unit cost field on the Maintain Inventory Items window. This price can be changed to a different amount. Enter a job if the transaction line needs to be applied to a job. The amount will not be assigned to a job until the item is received through a purchase invoice. Note that you cannot assign a job to a transaction line that is purchasing a stock or assembly item. Instead, you can assign the item to the job at the time of sale or through an inventory adjustment. Next, we will take a look at purchasing and receiving inventory and entering bills. Select Enter Bills from the Vendors and Purchases Navigation window. This task window is used to enter bills from vendors and to receive inventory that arrives from suppliers. Select the Dropship checkbox to specify a drop shipment from a vendor directly to a customer. Select the Waiting on Bill checkbox if a shipment of inventory is received without a vendor invoice. This allows the purchase to be recorded and inventory to be updated. The invoice will not be available for payment until the invoice is edited by deselecting the Waiting on Bill checkbox and saving it again. The Terms field shows the vendor terms as set up with the vendor record. To change the terms, click the arrow button to open the Terms Information window. Make any necessary changes and then click OK. If you select a vendor with no open purchase orders, the Apply to Purchases tab appears by default. This tab is used to enter purchases that did not originate on a purchase order. In addition, if items were received but not included in the original purchase order, you can add them here on this tab. The Unit Price field shows the last purchase cost for the item selected. New items that have not been ordered before and do not have beginning balances use the cost assigned to them in the last unit cost field on the Maintain Inventory Items window. If necessary, this price can be changed to a different amount. Enter a job if the transaction line needs to be applied to a job. You can enter a payment amount at the Amount Paid at Purchase field to make a partial or full payment to the invoice. A cash account and a reference number field appear when an amount is entered in the Amount Paid field. When you select a vendor that has one or more open purchase orders, the Apply to Purchase Order Number tab appears. Select a purchase order from the Apply to Purchase Order Number drop-down list. All open purchase orders for the selected vendor are listed. The remaining field displays the number of items that remain outstanding on a purchase order. This field cannot be changed from this window. Enter the quantity of items received in the Received field. The purchase order will remain open until all items are received or until it is manually closed. Now we will discuss different ways that you can pay bills in Sage 50 Accounting. To record payments, 
select Pay Bills from the Vendors and Purchases Navigation Center. The Payments window can be used to enter cash purchases and disbursements that do not have associated vendor invoices or bills. It is also used to apply payments to vendor invoices entered as purchases. When a vendor ID is selected, all unpaid bills for the vendor appear. You can choose to pay an entire invoice or make a partial payment. The Apply to Invoices tab lists all outstanding invoices for the selected vendor. Select invoices to pay by selecting the Pay checkbox next to each one. When all invoices are selected, click Print to print the disbursement check immediately or click Save to print the check later. When you select a vendor without any outstanding invoices or bills, the Apply to Expenses tab appears. The Apply to Expenses tab is used to enter cash purchases and prepayments. If you select a customer ID on the Payments window, the Apply to Customer Account tab appears. This tab can be used to record customer refunds. When you pay a vendor a prepayment or a deposit amount, the amount can then be applied to future invoices. To create a prepayment, select the vendor from the lookup list and then click the prepayment checkbox on the Apply to Expenses tab. With Write Checks, you can quickly enter a check and apply the amount to an expense account or a series of expense accounts. Select Write Checks from the Vendors and Purchases Navigation Center. If the payment does not involve invoices or inventory items, this is the easiest payment to use. A manual check is a check that was handwritten or previously printed and not entered into Sage 50 Accounting. A manual check is recorded like a normal payment with one difference. The check number is entered into the check number field. If cash was used to pay for an expense item, enter a reference number or a word in the check number field that identifies the transaction. This prevents Sage 50 from printing a check for the cash transaction. Note that a reference number should be used only once. Accounts Payable Reports provide information about your vendors and associated transactions. To preview or print these reports, select View All Vendor and Purchase Reports from the Vendors and Purchases Navigation Center, or select Reports and Forms from the menu bar. The check register lists all checks posted for the selected date range. This report is useful for keeping track of checks. The Purchase Journal report lists purchases and their general ledger distributions for a selected date range. This report is useful for verifying general ledger postings and tracking purchase transactions. And the Vendor Ledger lists detailed vendor transactions and the outstanding balance for each vendor for a selected date range. This report helps you resolve questions regarding individual vendor activity.